Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be why alpha males rule and beta males have the blues. Well, I'm sure this is going to elicit some uh, emotionally charged responses. Usually the beta males are the ones who always get upset in the comments when I use the term alpha. And, you know, what's interesting is people give me a hard time about saying you got to read... 3% man 10 to 15 times and the reason being is you got to learn how to transition from pickup to dating to the relationship phase and you have to know how to use the skills if you're in a relationship in the pickup phase and the dating phase to maintain your relationship. Serious students read the book 15, 20 times or more and as you guys have seen over the years the best success stories always come from people that follow the instructions. The people that struggle or the guys that think they're too smart, or they're too rich, or they don't have the time, this, that, whatever the excuse happens to be. And so I've got three emails I'm going to go through with you today. The first one is from a guy, he says he's been following me for three years, but yet he's only read the book twice. And there's a couple of instances in his email where you, you see his story, his rationalization for basically watching and cherry picking my work but not really doing anything to change his behavior and then excusing it. And that's why guys like that who choose to be beta, choose to not do what's necessary to help themselves, have the blues. That's why they this guy constantly is complaining that he's getting friend zoned by women, but yet he's been following me three years and barely read the book twice. And the last two emails are success stories. Both these guys read the book 20 times or more. And it completely changed their way of thinking. They understand the philosophy. And so they can apply it effortlessly and get repeatable success. <clears throat> Predictable, repeatable success, mind you. And when, you'll see that going through the emails. So I, I remember about, I don't know, about a month or so ago, I, I somebody sent me a link. And I went to this Reddit. I think it was a Reddit forum. It was some forum on the internet. And some dude's complaining about me and says that I answered a couple of emails of his and previous newsletters. And he, he was mocking me and complaining that I told him he hadn't read the book enough, hadn't learned it, hadn't read it 10 to 15 times. And so when I looked and I followed the links, I went and I looked up the emails. And this particular guy writing all these nasty things about me on this forum on the internet, but yet literally the very next day or within days he's sending another email to me in hopes that i'll answer it you're the best you're the greatest you're awesome you changed my life you helped me so much and then the meanwhile he's going to this forum going, he sucks he's like ah, ah, ah. and so, still even now just a few weeks ago this guy is still sending me ask kissy emails hoping that i will answer his emails it's like when i see stuff like that it's like you're phony when you send stuff in and then you go on a forum and complain that I broke your balls because you keep doing the same things. It's like you can't help everybody. You know, you got to participate in your own rescue. And I want to work with people that are ready, willing, able, and open to learning. In other words, you got to be coachable. you got to be teachable. you got to be fat. Fat stands for faithful, available, and teachable. And that particular dude obviously is not. And just like the, you'll see in this first email here, this guy's not following instructions, and you can tell he's frustrated, but he's doing it to himself. And yet he rationalizes and makes makes excuses for his behavior and, the, and just like, oh, shucks, this is the way I am. Well, if you keep doing the same things over and over again, that's a definition of insanity. If you keep doing what you've always done, you'll continue to get what you've always got. The first guy gets the same thing he's always gotten because he really hasn't changed his behavior. He's tried to cherry pick things here and there. Oh, I'm going to find a perfect pickup line, the fir the perfect phrase of words to say, a couple little actions, and then the panties will just magically drop. I don't need to read the book 10 to 15, 20 times like Corey says. I I've had guys that are worth hundreds of millions of dollars very arrogantly condescend that they don't have time to read the book. And it's like, yeah, you're complaining because you got blue balls. You're complaining because your girlfriend kicked you out. You're complaining because you got friend zone. But yet you're too rich and powerful to have time to read the book. It's like you're not going to change your behavior. Nothing's going to change. You're going to keep getting the same results. And quite frankly, you deserve it. I'm harsh. I'm not here to blow sunshine up anybody's ass. I'm going to tell you exactly like it is because life is too short 
to dick around. And this guy in this first email is just dicking around and wasting his life and wasting his time and kind of wasting ours. But it's a good email to call out because his mindset's what's getting in the way. And what my book does is completely change your mindset and the way you look at yourself and the way you interact with the world. So with that said, let's go through the first guy's email. He says, hey, Corey, I came upon your work three years ago after a rough divorce and took a year to collect myself and read 3% man twice in that time. He says, I know, I know. So this dude hasn't read the book in two years. He was, he was reading the book twice, did nothing because he says he was trying to collect himself. In other words, he read the book, didn't do anything to practice. You can't get better if you don't practice. Repetition's a mother of skill. So that right there tells me he's not a serious student. And here he is, read the book twice in the first year and then previous two years hasn't read it and is just trying to cherry pick in videos and he wonders why he's getting nowhere. He's still acting the same way. He's still exhibiting the same behaviors that led to him getting a divorce. He says, I then dated four women over the next year and did well, but wasn't really feeling any of them and eventually cut them all out because I'm not going to keep a girl around just to have one. Well, the title of the book is One of Your Dreams, not how to go out and be mediocre and settle like pretty much most people do. He says, I'm a father of two kids, 11 and 7. I'm really committed to raising them right with a 50-50 time split as well as starting my brand new remodeling business. <clears throat> This keeps all my time and money tied up and makes it difficult to get out. Again, that's part of his story there. Oh, well, I don't have time or money, so I don't get out. That becomes the excuse for doing nothing. Meanwhile, time is going by. Your life is going by. The amount of time you got left is like sands through the hourglass. So are the days of our lives. He says, I'm not big in the bar scene, so I opened up my social circle by joining an awesome church with lots of women my age to meet and chat with the issue i have is is that i keep getting friend zoned remember he hasn't read the book in over two years because i'm kind of a kid at heart and i like to joke and laugh a lot but this seems to turn women off what's turning women off is you continuing to act like a beta male and the fact you haven't changed your behavior at all he kind of likes to think of himself as a guy that knows material but if you're constantly getting friend zoned you're not exhibiting what's in the book is being too happy really an unattractive trait? Not at all. He says, I'm really just sweating it and seeing that I am a very spiritual as a person. I just accept things for the way they are and move on. In other words, I'm not going to do anything to try to change or get better. I'm just going to keep doing the same thing over and over again, hoping somebody will put up with me. He says, I'll give a quick recap of the most recent woman I went out with and you can let me know where I'm going wrong. Well, you haven't read the book in over two years and you haven't read it at least 10 to 15 times. So that tells me you're not a serious student. You're half-assing it. And you're half-assing your personal life. And so if you're just going to keep behaving the same way you've always behaved, you're going to keep getting the same exact results you've always gotten. He says, I met a very attractive woman. She's 45 through a customer I was doing some work for. And the customer was playing matchmaker for her friend and kind of hooked us up. I met her for coffee on the first date because I knew nothing about her in the eight-minute conversation we had on the job site. You can go to coffee, but again, what's the whole purpose of a date? It's the man's job to create an opportunity for sex, to have to hang out, to have fun, to hook up, to do something romantic, not something platonic. We spoke for two hours, and she did a lot of the talking, but I'm very extroverted, so I'd say... 60 40 with her speaking more okay so he's doing 40 percent of talking the book says you should do no more than 20 to 30 percent so more than likely he probably talked 50 50 maybe it was flipped around because he's probably bsing himself a little bit trying to puff himself up make himself look a little bit better but he says i'm very extroverted so in other words he was doing a lot of talking and not a lot of listening not a lot of getting to know her he says it was a good icebreaker, so I asked her out for a night of music the following weekend. The date went really well as, as well, but I found out she's Mormon and doesn't drink. He found that out by the second date, huh? <laughs> Sounds like he did a lot of listening on the first date. This is not a problem at all. We still did some dancing, walking, and talking around, and she kept bumping into me as we walked. I successfully went in for the kiss that night, but it wasn't a makeout session or anything. So she really didn't kiss him back passionately. 
So if if it's not a, if she's not a good kisser, pst, I'd be flushing a number. He says the next date was more casually. We did some Christmas shopping together. You go Christmas shopping as your third date? He's like, what? I had her cracking up most of the night, but got the cheek at the end. Did I screw this up by being my normal fun self? Well, you screwed up by going out with a girl that really wasn't into you. When you go to kiss a girl and she's a lousy kisser or doesn't kiss you back, I wouldn't go on another date with her. Again, this is why you read the book 10 to 15 times. You could have avoided all this. He says, do I have to put on some stoic BS, stoic mask to keep her interest? Well, you got to learn the material. If you're not willing to learn the material... There's 51 other, 51 million YouTube channels that you can follow, and I would suggest you probably go follow one of them because you've been following me for three years. You read the book twice, two years ago. You're not a serious student. You're not really serious about getting better. So, again, if you're not going to take it seriously, you're not going to take your personal life seriously, you, you might as well go waste your time somewhere else. Do you think religious perspectives slow down or change your normal recommendations? Look at all the rationalizations he's going through here. Why doesn't she like me? Why didn't she? What, what did I do to turn her off? It's she's not into you, dude. Should I read your book another dozen times? Yeah, that's what the instructions say. And you wonder why you're three years down the road and you've pretty much gotten nowhere other than constantly getting friend zoned. Lastly, I also have the issue that I'm cool being by myself doing my thing. I wasn't even looking when this happened, and I think my apathy comes through in my dates, even though I'm just having fun. So there you have it. His apathy comes out in what he says, what he does, the tone of his voice. Again, this is why you read it 10 to 15 times. So you focus on building up your life and building a life and lifestyle that you'd be proud of. If you're not proud of yourself or your life or your lifestyle... How are you going to get a woman excited about it? He says, I'm sure there are others in this boat that aren't all red pill, but just can't fit the mold. So this is his excuses here of why he can't be successful. It's not in the cards for him. I'm sure there are others in this boat that aren't all red pilled, but just can't fit the mold of being a badass playboy millionaire kickboxer with a Bugatti, just dudes living and making the best of it. Thanks for your work. So this is an excuse. Oh, well, I'm not Andrew Tate, so it's not in the cards for me, so I'm not even going to try. That's your story. And people are going to act consistently with how they view themselves to be. And it doesn't matter whether the view is accurate or not. So after going through this email, the guy's not even, he's not even remotely serious about trying to improve himself. He feels like he's already done everything he needs to do, and all he has to do is just show up, and the perfect girl is just going to drop her panties for him. It's not how it works, dude. Again, if you're not going to take your your life seriously, your personal life, it's that's on you. You might as well go spend your time somewhere else. On the next. So let's see the difference between a guy who has a completely different mindset and does take his personal life seriously and does take his success seriously. He says, good morning, Corey. I'm a big follower and I've read your book 20 times and I follow it to the T. I recently found that one of my dreams by putting myself in uncomfortable situations by learning how to salsa. It's been amazing two years. She was everything I wanted with a great career, but then she began to pursue her career and move farther from me and cut our time from every day to once a week. Yeah, she's changing that deal. <clears throat> I understand that she needed to do this in her life and become a pilot and international businesswoman selling private jets. We were in love, but the long-term plan for her to move closer was two years away. We both have young daughters, and it felt unfair to withhold a family relationship while she was in pursuit of her dreams. Yeah, you don't want to feel like you're competing with a man. She's not wanting to build a life together. If she's moving away because she wants to pursue her, she wants to be a boss girl, let her go. Go be a boss girl. I want somebody who wants to build something together. So I told her I love her and I would not accept the new term she created. It completely crushed her. I really don't feel bad because I felt like I've always kept my center and made my happiness first. She called multiple times trying to get back together, but I simply told her the only terms I would accept would be in the location where we started, which was close to me. So notice how a guy who's read this 20 times, he's very objective about it. 
He's very clear-headed about it. He understands the material. He understands her actions and what she's doing. Instead of getting closer together, she's moving further away from him. You never try to keep somebody who doesn't want to keep you. And if her career is more important than the relationship, well, let her have her career and you go find somebody who wants a more important relationship. So what does he do? Because he knows the material backwards and forwards. He says, well, the next day after I broke up with her, I went on a date, LOL, with a girl from a local Facebook group. I simply said, hello. She said, do I know you? Oh, let me do the girl voice. She said, do I know you? I said, no, but we can get to know each other. I told her, let's grab a drink sometime and I'd like to get to know you. He says, this girl is gorgeous, five years younger, has no kids, and a huge house. Oh. It seems like every time I break up, I upgrade. Well, that's the way it's supposed to be. See, the difference between the first guy and the second guy is the second guy read the book. He had a bump in the road. He changed his approach, became open to something new because he focused on his outcome, which was a relationship with somebody who's ready, willing, able, and open. And boom, he goes from one girl... I mean, it happens pretty fast. doesn't happen like that for most people, but that's what happens when you're prepared. As Confucius said, success depends upon prior preparation. Without said preparation, there's sure, sure to be failure. The first guy is constantly failing because he really didn't change anything about himself. He read my book a couple of years ago. He's been cherry picking in videos. He's not really taking it serious. Plus, you can tell by the story and what's in his email that he's not changed. His mindset hasn't changed, and he's just got the oh shucks attitude Hopefully somebody will just accept me the way I am and put up with it. That's just not going to work. If you're going to continually display unattractive behavior, you're going to continually get rejected for exactly the same reasons. That's why beta males have the blues and alpha males rule like this guy is. Literally has a breakup. Next day he's out with somebody hotter. He says, same thing with her when I use the phone to set dates, to take my time, stay centered and focus on myself. Drives her crazy. She talks about how I'm the first real man that she has been with. First date, I went in for the kiss, of course. I'm blunt, direct, honest, and very witty. All the things that the other, the first guy seems to think he is. But the difference is this guy knows the material. The first guy doesn't. For every date, I just tell her what I want her to wear and the temperature, and that's it. Her friends all ask her what she's going to do, and they all follow up with her like it's some love story. But at the end of the day, meeting new women has been really easy as long as you follow your rules and most importantly, stay centered and focus on yourself. If you create a great life and great lifestyle for yourself, meeting women will be a side effect of that. So let's go through the third guy's email. He says, Dear Coach Corey Wayne, my name is Bob. So I wanted to send you a success story as a longtime follower of your work. I've read your book in excess of 20 times over the last four years. So He's been following me for a year longer than the first guy has. And he's read the book over 20 times because he's a serious student. And because he's a serious student, he knows the material so well, he could probably teach a class on it. Let's see how it showed up for him. What led me to finding you was multiple failed relationships and dates once I moved to a new city four years ago. Going to a new city, relocating for work, I immediately hopped on dating sites. Four years ago, I met a girl who I thought I liked a ton with mutual feelings. After the third date, I was told that, quote, she didn't see this going any further and that she just got out of a long-term relationship. Kind of the same thing that the first emailer constantly is hearing. I like you, but I just think you as a friend. At the time, I was puzzled. This was happening far too often, just like the first guy's email. I decided to evaluate my actions and seek out answers. With every girl I'd been out with, I constantly texted all day, was too available, and was always too worried about them liking me, just like the first emailer was. This guy admits that he talks too much. And so more than likely, he's talking way more than he even admits. Because if women are constantly getting turned off and friend-zoning them, he's not, and then he's not even taking the time to get to know them. And then he, there's nothing mysterious about them. He says, I even brought up exclusivity and acted insecure. He says, gross, I know. I was the one driving the relationship forward and it never worked out. I cared too much, too soon, and was the nice guy. Women really like you more if they have to work for you. That's just a fact of life. And if you ha can create a life and a lifestyle where you're just surrounded by beautiful women that you're going to continue to see and get to know off and on just because they're in your group, 
It's, I mean, if there's more women around you than there are dudes, it makes it pretty easy. They go out of their way to get noticed by you. They're trying to get your attention. Once I found you, everything flipped. I began by watching your videos and just trying to grasp what your philosophy was. Shortly thereafter, I purchased your book and kept reading it over and over. I realized that I was over pursuing and acting like the woman in the relationship. Over the last three and a half years, I went on over 50 plus first dates and always stuck to your principles and mindset. Again, this guy's 50 dates in three and a half years. And what about the first guy? guy it sounded like he went on four dates three years ago or two years ago. And then that's the latest one that he was going out with who had no interest in him. But he's thinking because he got set up, oh, this girl must like me. He goes for the kiss. She doesn't kiss him back very passionately. And then he goes out again and gets the cheek and he's surprised. He should have never gone on that additional date. But because he's got nothing else going on in his life, he kept giving her a chance. What I learned is that you, see, this is the important, this is the difference between the, this guy and the first guy. He says, what I learned is that you cannot make a woman like you and it is truly a numbers game paired with strong game and confidence. Women are already predisposed to like you. The problem most guys have and that I used to have is that you end up talking them out of, out of liking you right away. He says, just what you teach. Some girls you'll go out with, have a great time, get the kiss, and they may get flaky. Or some you may hook up with after the second or third date. What I always kept in mind was to keep circulating and never let one girl bring me down. That's something the first guy continues to do. If she said she didn't want to see me anymore after hooking up, I always said, you're great. And if you change your mind, let me know. For your new readers and listeners, getting hung up on one chick, you really need to not worry because when you meet someone who is right for you, she will make it easy. Like the quote that's in the beginning of my book from Adam Carolla, when a woman likes you, the door is open and all you have to do is walk through them. If the doors start closing in your face, then you walk away. Case in point, two months ago, I went on a fantastic first date with a girl who was awesome, who I was just asked to become exclusive with. From the start, everything was easy. I just do it for her and still don't really know why. Attraction's not a choice. Mother Nature's handled that. He says, from setting the first date to where we are now, I was always patient, never in a hurry, never reached out during the day or night when I was working or busy with plans. Even once or twice when she didn't contact me for a day or two, I held back the urge to reach out. She would always end up reaching out asking how I was. I just set up the dates and followed your principles. I never mentioned anything in the future and stayed in the present with her. Damn, this is hard, guys, but you need to flex your emotional muscle. It makes all the difference. It's called emotional self-control. And obviously, emailer number one is has been, at least up until this point, unwilling to exercise it. He just makes excuses. He's just like, oh, shucks, this is the way I am. I'm just very extrovert and I talk all the time. If a woman doesn't feel heard and understood, the legs ain't going to open for you, bro. I even had instances of her insecurities coming out where I was able to get down to her emotions and make her feel better and relieved. He made her feel heard and understood. This is what guys do. One woman's like, ah! The guy's like, shrinks it down to nothing. And that's what he did, just through listening. This girl is really special and I'm psyched to have met her. What a difference your book has been and I truly thank you for helping me become a three percenter. It's a fun feeling. Sincerely, Bob. So you can see the difference. The beta male complains and says, this is the way I am and I can't do anything about it. I'm busy. I don't have the time. I don't have the money. I'm starting a new business. Blah, 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 blah. My old business partner always used, he was always going to get back into his music. I got to do this. Got to sell my jet skis. Got to get my taxes in order. Blah, 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 blah. You know, it was just, and then he's on his deathbed and he's like, you got to finish. And he didn't finish. He died with his music still in him. That was pretty sad. But that was his choice. And unfortunately, way too many people make the choice. But again, you can see the contrast in the emails here. An unserious student, two guys that are very serious. So it's obvious why the alphas rule. They get shit done. They don't sit there and go, oh, poor me. Oh, I don't have time. Oh, I'm too busy. Oh, I'm too smart. Oh, I'm too rich. My business takes too much time. They don't make excuses. They recognize they got a problem. They recognize that what they're doing ain't working. They learn the book and then they apply it and then they get the results. It's 
pretty simple. So if you've got a question or a challenge and you'd like to get my help, go to understandingrelationships.com, click the Products tab at the top of your screen, and book a coaching session with yours truly. Until next time, I will talk to you soon. 